Hello and welcome to Excel-DashboardTemplates.com. This is Steve Equals True. Please visit my blog at Excel-DashboardTemplates.com where you're sure to learn the latest posts, tips, tricks, and techniques and learn everything about Excel. All right, today you're going to follow up with the next two items um, regarding our Many Sums Friday Challenge. So previously we had this data. We had individual dates, 10 different store IDs, 150,000 records of sales, and we're trying to find only values for the month of January, February, March um, for every single store. We're trying to create one formula that we can then copy down and over uh, for this entire range to set up this table. Um, and uh, we had three different options that we were going to see if you could do. Check out yesterday's video so that you can see how we did it quickly with a pivot table. Um, and uh, now we're going to go ahead and write the two other formulas that we have in here as well. Now, uh, before we get started, one thing you'll notice is in the data here, um, I have an extra date of an extra column. I'm going to hide this column later uh, for our formulas, but this is going to be used in our formulas to check the month date range. So I have added a column of January 1st, 2017, so that we can check our dates, and you'll see how that works here in a second. Okay, so let's start with the sum ifs formula. So what we're going to have here is uh, just start going into the cell F16 right next to store one and right below January 1st. We're going to do equals sum ifs and we're going to hit our tab button and now uh, it's going to want our sum range. So that is the sales amount and I'm going to hit F4 to lock in and make that an absolute reference. We don't want this to shift as I copy this formula down or over. We always want it to look at range C2 to C 150,000. Then I'm going to hit comma, and now we want our criteria range. Well, our first criteria range is going to be the store ID. So let's go ahead and do the whole range for B2 to B 250,000. I'm going to hit the F4 key once again to make that an absolute reference. I'm going to hit the comma, and now it's going to say, where is our store data? Well, we want this to be equal to store 1. Now, this puts in E16 in the formula, and I'm going to hit F4 several times. First one's going to make it an absolute value. Next one's going to make it an absolute value on the row 16, but we actually want it to be an absolute value on the E column. So three F4s, and it's dollar sign E16. Now we're going to do our um, next is what we're going to do is for our date range. So we've got it. We're looking for any dates that are equal to or greater than January 2016. So um, our criteria range is going to be the date. So I'm going to highlight the date column. Hit F4. Or I should say I'm going to highlight A2 to A150,000. I'm going to hit F4 to make that an absolute reference. I'm going to put a comma in. And now we're going to say this is where we're going to have to use some quotes in our sum if formula. And we're going to do it's greater than or equal to end quotes. And then we're going to join that with an ampersand. And after we join it with our ampersand equal to, so it's greater than or equal to F15, which is our January 1st, 2016. Now I'm going to hit F4 there uh, once, and you can see that's going to always lock it into F15, but I want this to slide as we copy it over. So we're going to want to lock in column F. Or I'm sorry, we're going to want to lock in uh, row 15. So I'm going to keep hitting it. So you can see there I hit it twice, and you can just toggle all the way through it. So F15 with total absolute. Now we're just locking in the row of 15. And so I'm going to hit comma. And now we're going to do our final uh, check here as well. Once again, it's on the date range. We want the month of January, and so we want it to be less than February, which is the next start of our next column. So once again, to enter our criteria in the sum ifs function, do quotes less than end quotes, the ampersand to join it to a cell, and we're going to join it to G15. Oops, I'm doing this wrong because this needs to be our criteria range. So let me backspace that. And so we need to put in our criteria range. Once again, that is our whole date column um, of A2 through A150,000. I'm going to hit F4, and it's going to make that an absolute reference. Then I'm going to do comma, quotes, less than, end quotes, the ampersand. And we're going to choose February 1st. So what this says is if any values in C, um, we're going to sum up those if any values in B are equal to the column of E, 
which is going to be our store value. And then we're going to check our dates to make sure they are greater than or equal to January, which is our column right above us, um, and anything less than the column to the right. Now I need to lock that in for the column number, the row number of G15. Hit my end parentheses, hit enter, and you can see we have 337,425. That matches the value we have in our pivot table, so I believe we have the right formula. I can now copy this all the way across, and I can copy it all the way down. Now, it's done the calculations for us, and let's check the grand total. We have 66,038,000. That's what we had in our pivot table as well, 66 million. 038. So our formula is working and it will work for anything in this column. It will work for anything, um, I'm sorry, those rows and anything in this column and get you your sums for those specific month ranges. Now, once again, we needed to add an extra column in here and we can just go ahead and hide that um, to get rid of it, but we'll just leave it in there for uh, reference right now. And as you can see, it's going to check and say, is the date starting in December and less than the next month, which is in January? And that's how we're going to use our SUMIFS formula to copy that down. All right, so now uh, next thing we want to do is let's go ahead and do our sum products. Now this is very similar to sum ifs and that's why I put these together in the video. Um, however, it's just got some different terminology. Now if you have greater than Excel 2003, you probably are just going to stick to your sum ifs function. However, some products, it's not an array formula, but it acts like an array formula. And prior to Excel 2007, I think, uh, you needed to use this function in order to do what we were doing here, this criteria-based summing. Um, but it does have a lot of power, so you should probably learn this technique because you may do it when it's not just a sum if. What if you want uh, uh, to do some other subtractions or multiplications? I don't know. But I have tested it out, and sum ifs is a lot faster than sum products, but let's give it a shot. So it's going to be very similar. First, we're going to do equals sum product. And I'm going to hit tab. Now, it's going to ask for an array, and we're just going to create the function right in here. And I always recommend the best way some product works is to wrap it in parentheses um, every time you're doing a criteria check. So you can see I've got some product, the first parentheses for the function sum product, and then I've started another parentheses so that we can start doing our criteria checker. So first thing is I want to click on the column of uh, information that holds our sales data, and so that's C2 through C150,000, and I hit the F4 key to make that an absolute reference. Now, I'm going to multiply this times um, the values that I'm going to start another parenthesis, and this is going to be very similar to you'll notice what we did in the sum ifs function. I'm going to say, okay, Let's go ahead and check the store ID. So I'm going to highlight the B data, hit F4 to lock it in as an absolute reference. If B2 through B150,000 equals, and we're just going to pick E3, once again, we're going to lock this into the column so that we can copy it down and copy it across, and it will always stay in that column E. So now we've created our store checker. Now we need to create our date checkers, and we're just going to keep doing a multiplication. Now, how this works before we get too far, it's going to take all this sales data here, and then it's going to do this checker, and every 150,000 points, it's going to check and see, does it, um, for row four, let's say, it's store five. Now, is that equal to store one? It is not, so it's going to give you a zero value. It's going to multiply those together for that zero value and you'll come up with zero. Now when it gets down to row nine, it's going to be true and this is going to become a number one. It's going to multiply it times that value of 818 and that will be added along with all 150,000 times that it checks that to come up with either ones or zeros multiplied times the sales data and then it adds all of those up. So same thing the sum function is doing as well. Some ifs function I should say. So let's go ahead and continue on. We're going to add another parentheses in here. We are going to say if the date data, F4, to lock that in as an absolute reference, is equal to, oh, I'm sorry, greater than or equal to, so that we include January 1st, 2016. Once again, I'm going to lock that into the row by hitting F4 several times until we get F dollar sign 2. Um, and then I'm going to also do in here another, multi end the parentheses, another multiplication, and we need to add one final parenthesis here, and we're going to say if our data, 
date data and F4 is less than column G to hit F4 so that we lock that on the row number of two. End my parentheses for that final date checker and end my parentheses for the entire sum product. And before I hit enter, let's go ahead and take a look at this. So it's taking our sales data. It's checking it for if it is the correct store. It's also checking the date to see if it's in between greater than or equal to January and less than February. And if we did that right, we should get 337,425. We did do it right. Now I can copy this all the way down takes a second or two for it to calculate. I can then copy it all the way across. And our grand total, as soon as it gets done updating, there we go, 66,038,000,038. 66,038. You can see it works just the same as the sum ifs formula. It does take a little bit longer to calculate 150,000 uh, different checkers times the value and summing up all of those. We did also use that same sort of helper column so that we can just copy that formula right across. And then as we are checking it, it's gonna check between those two dates. As you can see, it's highlighted there. Hopefully you've learned something really cool about how to do some products um, and some ifs if you haven't been aware on how to do those before. Uh, in the next video, we'll give you the bonus material of showing you how to do this with an array formula. Once again, this is Steve equals true. Head on over to the blog to download the sample data and give it a try for yourself over at Excel dashboard templates.com and I hope you have a great day.